here on the sidelines of the Crawford Australian Leadership Forum, I have uh, the great pleasure to interview uh, Professor Song Min Soon, who is uh, the President of the University of North Korean Studies in Seoul and a former Foreign Minister of the Republic of Korea. And we're going to talk about uh, North Korea's nuclear program. Professor Song, could I start by asking you why has North Korea developed its own nuclear capabilities? Well, North Korea has a long history of developing uh, its own nuclear weapon. It uh, continued about, uh, I think, more than uh, half a century. So in 2006, they first tested uh, a nuclear bomb. There are some uh, motivations they have in mind. I think first, in, uh, since 1960s, 70s, they thought their conventional firepower, conventional uh, capabilities, uh, in, not in their favor. So they wanted to compensate the military balance. And they also wanted to uh, develop uh, uh, nuclear technology for the sake of uh, power plants, because there are shortage of electricity. In South, we do have about 30% of our electricity is provided by uh, atomic power. And uh, I think uh, most important thing about these two motivations probably is to uphold their regime. You know, the North Korea uh, is dynastic dictatorial regime. They want to keep uh, their regime by having some prestige, showing the prestige to their people that we do have nuclear power, we have nuclear power plants, we are a great country, so please support us. That kind of uh, domestic political reason, I think, prevails uh, as well. And does this demonstrate uh, a paranoia about the outside world? Is, is North Korea's um, concern, security concern, justified in your opinion? Well, to they, they, they are in paranoia situation, uh, but to our view, oh, I don't think it is justifiable. Uh, this, uh, we, we don't have uh, any intention to invade or attack them. Actually, during the Korean War, North Koreans attacked South. That means they put their vice versa. When they are weak, they may be attacked by the South, allied with the United States. But that's not totally not uh, uh, true. So uh, I think it's because of their regime's paranoia uh, mentality uh, is behind there. So since the mid 1990s, in, in, in fact, since 1994, South Korea, the United States, Japan, and other countries have tried to develop um, uh, regimes for managing North Korea's nuclear ambitions. Yes. Uh, since the first North Korean nuclear crisis. These uh, regimes have not worked. Why haven't they worked? Um, have they been inadequately designed? Or will simply nothing work to deter the North Koreans? Well, actually, before 1994, there was a, another uh, agreement between South and North in 1992. Oh, it, mo it was a South-North Joint Denuclearization Declaration. And then it failed. And then in 1994, there was an agreement between United States and North Korea, Korea which was mentioned, the Geneva Agreement. And then after that, also in 2005, there was a six-party talks. And we call it September Joint Statement at Six-Party Talks. These were three major agreements um, we made with uh, North Korea. As you said, it failed. Why? We failed in implementing these good agreements because of the lack of mutual trust. When we uh, implement the agreement, it is something like exchanging mutual cards. Yeah. You know? I, I give out what my card, and you give out your card, and then we exchange in the middle. We need a sort of uh, art of synchron synchronization of Giving, give and take. But in the case of North Korean nuclear pr problem, the cars we are ho having, both sides, are not symmetric. For example, North Korea wants to stop 
their post. North Korea is demanded to, we demand them to stop their nuclear uh, plants operation, uh, like reprocessing or something. But at the same time, for example, the United States lift sanctions step by step and on all parts give some economic assistance. These cards are very difficult to synchronize. At the beginning it goes, but in the later stage, when North Korea was requested to dismantle, actually scrapping their facilities step by step, they want to have secure the United States action on normalizing relations, normalization of relations with North Korea. But as you know, normalizing relations with the country has a long procedure, right? The United States wants to some discrepancy and transparency of the regime and the human rights, and uh, they are guaranteed not to affiliate with any you know, terrorism or something. So these cards to be played by Americans and the North Korean steps to dismantle, scrapping the facilities, very difficult to match. They want the Americans act first. But United States could not keep out the first before North Korea take concrete steps. So we need to coordinate these two steps by both sides and if well synchronized. That's the, the key. And we failed to make it. But actually, in 2005, North Korea clearly pledged in the presence of five, five other parties, including China, that they would keep up all nuclear weapons and the new existing nuclear programs. Even though they are, these days they are now stepping back, but the so far most clear and formal agreement was uh, that joint statement in 2005. Now you were a member of the six party talks. Yes. Uh, you were one of the negotiators. Is this uh, an, an effective mechanism? Is this something that you would advocate starting up again as a way of trying to uh, uh, moderate North Korea's actions? Or in your opinion, have the six party talk talks outlived their usefulness? Well, actually, six party talks, if it fails, I don't think we can find an alternative. People say that the six party talks is dead. But when it is dead, we have to find an alternative. But nobody now produces an alternative. I think uh, the system, talk system was not, it itself was not a problem. Uh, the basic, as I said, the basic mis mutual mistrust is the problem. And then how to reduce this mutual mistrust is the key to succeed in any negotiation. Iran's case, for example. Uh, in, in the case of Iran, Iran has been exposed to the outside world for many years, even before you know, the, the, the Khomeini. And then even after Khomeini, Iran uh, was interacting with outside world. North Korea is not doing that kind of interaction with outside world. I think we would first promote the interaction between North Korea and the outside world and get these people know about how to build mutual uh, trust. To my view, for example, South Korea, United States and Japan combined, we do have strong power, you know, formidable power vis-a-vis -vis North Korea. If we do have more confidence that even a small failure in implementing, we can, we can afford. North Korea think that they cannot make even a small step of failure. So we, we take some initiative and lead them out of their isolation. Uh, I think it's the, the, the way to start it. Now North Korea's closest ally is China. Uh, China has obviously uh, become frustrated with North Korea uh, over its nuclear weapons program and yet China has backed North Korea over things such as the, the sinking of the Chonan 
uh, for example, what role should China be playing in, uh, in helping uh, to moderate North Korea's behavior? And does China have leverage over North Korea? Well, China certainly has a very effective leverage. You know, even today, if China shut off its pipeline on the oil and other food assistance and other daily life provision, then North Korea can hardly uh, sustain the system. But China cannot do that. People say that China has a concern over North Korea's nuclear program. But China also has a fear about the collapse of North Korea. China simply cannot accept a collapse of North Korea that may lead to a Korean peninsula unified by the terms of South Korea, which is militarily allied with the United States. That's simple. Long history, China proved it its policy. Thousands of years. That's geopolitics. So we have to overcome this geopolitical constraints. That was the reason why in the uh, 2005 at Six Party Talks, we introduced peace regime on the Korean Peninsula. Means denuclearize the Korean Peninsula between South and North, peacefully coexist for longer term. And in the longer term, we would find a modest vivendi of Korean Peninsula, which is acceptable not only to both Koreas, but also this geopolitical constraints means United States and China's mutual interest. That was the formula. So I think this formula we reached in 2005 is very good, better than anything that has ever been formulated. But implementation, and then implementation means in the, in, in the course of negotiation, stronger power needs, when stronger power take actions, it is regarded as an, as an initiative. But weaker power takes initiative, it is regarded as a subjugation, right? Capitulation like that. So China, China has that kind of uh, predicament but still, I think China now needs to take more bold action in moving this implementation ahead. Um, as I said yesterday's uh, seminar here, Chinese are saying that uh, Asian security by Asians. Xi Jinping said it. But if he really meant it, he need, China needs more proactive action in implementing this agreement. So you mentioned uh, the broader region. Uh, is there more that the broader region, including Australia, can do to help bring about a more satisfactory situation on the Korean Peninsula? I mean, satisfactory to whom? A more stable, more predictable, um, peaceful situation yes. on the Korean Well, you, I'm reminded that uh, people say, without stability of the, your neighbor, without the neighbors, but the stable labor, you cannot have your own security. So I think uh, we need to keep some, not only security assurances, but also uh, some economic uh, and social assurances to North Korea so that they first live in stable condition and then find a way to give up weapons. The first way they argue is, North Korean argue is, lift the sanction on us and uh, recognize us as a country, normalize relations, and talking to Americans. But as I said, Americans, United States policy does not allow it. Hmm? United States is not going to normalize relations with a country which has nuclear bomb outside the MPT system. And then this gap should be uh, bridged between some parties. I think, uh, to my view, uh, that job can be done in, by South Korea and in collaboration uh, with uh, China, because China has to guarantee 
North Korea's follow-up action of dismantling their nuclear program in case United States takes an initiative. Uh, in my country, uh, on this position, there has been always diverging views between governments and change of governments, like in your case here, change of governments changes some policy, but we need some a consistent policy in that direction.